Yes, Jim. Sorry, you said it was an unprecedented agreement. Um, do you think it could be precedent setting, and would that be a good or a bad thing? Hello? Um, I, I think that the nature of this whole um, <clears throat> inquiry was, was somewhat precedent setting. I, I don't really suspect that uh, this will open the doors to other similar uh, actions by NHTSA. You know, and yet, why, why, wouldn't they expect, why wouldn't they expect to be able to resolve investigations in this way from now on? What makes this unique? Well, I think that um, uh, the, the fact that there was a real divergence in views between Chrysler and NHTSA on this, that NHTSA really was unable to come up with anything uh, compelling, uh, is what motivated them to, uh, to accept this proposal. Um, that is not typical in, in most NHTSA investigations. You know, we're not looking at this as much as a latch strength effort or issue as we are a customer perception. I mean, we are operating here in the court of public opinion, and what we're really here talking about today is customer perceptions. We're not talking about the strength of one latch versus another. We're talking about the consumer's perception and the consumer's concern, and we are taking what we think are aggressive actions to address that. Am I on? Yeah. Um, NHTSA uses a rather formal procedure to, to follow and determine safety investigations. Uh, we were working with them to determine this one. We remain convinced they would close this one and will close this one when all the facts are in. What happened was, in this particular case, we simply couldn't wait for that to happen. That's the big difference between this situation and a lot of other investigations NH NHTSA undertakes. What are you replacing them with, and how are you fixing them? Chris? Uh, <coughs> excuse me. The latches we'll be uh, replacing them with are the 1995 model year latches. As part of our continuous improvement program on the whole product, we continuously try and improve the vehicle. So we've been strengthening our latches over the years, just as we improve our airbag systems and everything else. So the 95 latch is what we'll, we will be putting on our 1991 excuse me, 1990 through 1994 model minivans and something similar to it on the prior model years. What, what's going to happen to um, owners, uh, second and third owners, owners who have bought uh, used models or, or bought one off their neighbor or something like that? How are you going to reach these people? Um, we uh, use the RL Polk system of state registrations and will notify all current owners um, of this service action regardless of uh, whether the first owner or third owner. We're also, as I said, doing a national advertising campaign. We will have print ads and we'll have television. So we think we're going to reach more people than, than NHTSA would normally reach in a, in a campaign like this. Um, Joanne, did you have a question? <laughs> Actually, I'm wondering if the timing here is not perfect. Um, this action is going to bring people into the dealerships at precisely the time that you're launching a new minivan. How much? of that went into your calculation of no. whether this was a good thing to do. No, it really isn't all that sinister. Um, this is, this is what, what you see is what you get. We're really doing it for the reasons we say, and that is to take care of the customers, the 3.9 or 4 million customers who have our minivans now. If we sell another one on this, uh, in the process, that's terrific, but that's not the reason we're doing it. Sorry, Dave, I'm sorry. C could you tell me if it's, uh, the new latch is going to be a double stage latch or simply a stronger latch? Chris? It's a, it's a single latch. It does not have a secondary, nor is there a need for a secondary in our, in our mind because a secondary is, uh, is replicated in our minivan by having uh, a liftgate, a jar light, and a warning chime. Dave? The safety recall. Isn't it possible that uh, owners will not have any sense of urgency and therefore your response rate might be low? Uh, we don't think so. We have a letter, or we are in the process of developing a letter for consumers that we think will definitely give them, give them the message. We don't know what kind of return rate we'll get, except that we do know that minivan owners, again, are family owners and, and pay an awful lot of attention to their products. So um, we're not trying to cut down the number of returns we And get. remember, when they bring their cars into the dealerships, we'll have that added reminder as well. So uh, we think we'll have very good return. Follow-up question. If, if 
if I bring my van in for service or whatever and you tell me, oh, you can replace the latch, is that something you can do while I wait? Is it a fairly quick procedure? Yes, the procedure is quick. Obviously, it's going to depend on dealer scheduling, you know, and, and their hours and so on. But typically, it's less than an hour operation. So if you were bringing a car in for their service, uh, it's, it's more than likely that this would be done in the same time frame. Joe? changes in this latch that make it uh, better, uh, qualitatively better than the old one? Well, maybe I should show them to you later there. Uh, it's just uh, under extreme deformation, it, we limit uh, the amount of deformation uh, that can go on in the latch and does make it a little stronger. I can show you the details afterwards. Could, could you uh, talk about um, how much greater crash force uh, this, this new latch can withstand compared to the previous latches? I mean, is it, is it uh, you know, 50% greater or something like that? No, you're really into an esoteric issue. I think Dale and I would love to regale you all with all the intricacies of latch. First of all, everybody ties into latch, but it's the entire hatch and the body structure and everything else. So we can spend a couple hours going through it. Uh, the strength of the latch has increased, but you have to consider the entire system. And uh, that becomes a very, very complicated discussion. Jim? I'd like to, uh, Buddy, Go excuse ahead. me, if I could add just one thing to that. Uh, I think it's very important that, sh that we remind you that in severe crashes, hatches on all vehicles can be forced open in a collision. So it's not so much that putting a stronger latch on prevents hatches from opening. It's a, it's a relative thing. And it's not because we put a stronger latch on that we would expect a market reduction in severe accidents. Uh, we're simply providing some, some added strength to the latch. Yeah, Let's, let me continue. Again, if you looked at the data that Bud presented, uh, clearly it's, it's not happening there in the, in the real world. So the amount of incremental improvement that you get uh, in as far as hatch openings <coughs> is concerned uh, is probably unmeasurable. But it's directionally correct, and that's why we're taking that action. We'll take one more question, Jim. Okay, Jim, yeah, they're both pointing Sorry. at you. Um, <laughs> how many civil suits is Chrysler facing on this issue now, and what are the implications of this action for any civil litigation? By civil suits, you mean product liability? Yeah, regarding the <clears throat> I think there are about 18 pending product liability cases and about uh, five or six class action cases based on claims that there was a diminished value in the minivans because of this controversy. Settled out of court. How many product liability cases settled? Involving this vehicle. <laughs> I'm not sure. I think it's about, in, in the past year or two years, we've settled, I don't know, Bill, eight or nine of them. Uh, <clears throat> as far as the class actions, we expect that um, we'll be able to resolve those pretty quickly. Any implications of the service action for the, for the civil suits? Well, to the extent that the, the service action does. Um, Improve the, improve the uh, strength of the, of the lift gate. Um, we expect that the numbers of uh, product liability claims will probably uh, not increase, will probably diminish. No, but I mean, retrospect, for the, for the already pending product liability claims, the fact that you're now taking this service action, does that weaken your position at all? We don't think it weakens our position. Uh, it's not uncommon for a company to make improvements in a product uh, during the course of that product's life, and that's really what it could be said we're doing here. Okay, thank you very much.